So, in the Atlantic this year, we are now expecting, and this includes subtropical storms, unlike previous years, we are expecting 22 named storms for this year in the Atlantic, eight hurricanes and five major hurricanes. A very high prediction, the highest that we have gone with in our years of uh, broadcasting our predictions. I think we started in 2019 or maybe in 2018, I can't remember now. Uh, but this is the Atlantic this year. Our key messages and our expected or likely significant tracks in 2022 on our screen there. Um, we are uh, showing latest trends indicating conditions particularly favourable or hurricanes developing near the Leeward Islands in early to mid-season with a very high chance of impacts for the Greater Antilles, particularly along the northern coastlines, um, southern Florida, the Florida Panhandle, um, and possibly maybe slightly further west of there as well, extending into maybe Alabama and Mississippi. Later season trends are strongly favouring activity in the Caribbean, um, particularly around the Greater Antilles once again, with western Cuba and the Yucatan at greatest threat. If we do get a Yucatan storm this year, it will probably be a little bit away from the rest of the activity actually, uh, from our current trends, but we might have maybe a couple of significant storms around that area into the Bay of Campeche. At the moment it does appear as though the uh, Gulf of Mexico, the Western Gulf, might get off with it a little bit, but we'll find out in a moment. Two channels of activity are likely this year, with many storms and some stronger hurricanes expected to divert out to sea, quite normal. Um, and the other channel existing, as we said, through the Great Antilles and through Western Florida. You can sort of make that out when you look at our track uh, predictions there. Um, so, current trends are suggesting that activity may be significantly limited in the Western Gulf of Mexico, although historic trends somewhat disagree and cannot be ignored. For instance, when we take a look at our past landfalls uh, on our analog seasons, Although I must say there aren't any particularly good analogues this year, so this could go out of the window. But uh, that is our best guess for past analogues. And you can see all the little patterns of landfalls, quite a few uh, different areas involved there. But you can see a few hotspots, I don't have it on my screen here. Uh, but as far as I can recall, there are quite a few hotspots around the western coast of Mexico, Texas, um, Florida obviously, and North Carolina. Uh, so that's the historical precedent for what we're looking at uh, but of course that isn't the whole story when we look at this year. Now in terms of timing of what's happening um, we are expecting most of the activity to be around peak season uh, particularly the anomalously busy times as you can see on our color coding there the oranges are more out of the ordinary in terms of strong anomalies and the yellows and the whites are much closer to average but as you can see a well above average season is planned for the Atlantic. And the chances of seeing particularly dark, bad conditions when all things have been considered, looking at the United States, this is for tropical storm force winds. We've uh, made it relative rather than percentages this time around because uh, I don't feel that the percentages are particularly helpful. Um, so we have relative chances here and you can see the very high chances, curiously, only on the western half of Florida more than the eastern half because it's looking like at the moment that the eastern coast from central Florida northwards to North Carolina uh, chances are a little bit lower than usual there for this year. This is a tropical storm conditions of course chances are still quite significant. Um, high chances but not very high chances in Texas and Louisiana uh, because western Louisiana because there's uncertainty particularly in that area big uncertainty on the western Gulf this year North Carolina it looks like something will happen there this year when we're looking at tropical storm impacts and possibly more and the US East Coast whilst it doesn't look like there's going to be a direct um, impact from a storm ploughing right up from the sea uh, it does look like there could be one or more substantial threats from storms that have already made landfall and are then moving on to the New England area so that's something to watch out for this season uh, particularly in around September October um, I don't think there's anything else of real note on that US graphic uh, looking at the hurricane chances you know that, that's pretty uh, pretty clear as well and you can clearly make out the uh, less certainty in the Texas region uh, but certainly for Florida, uh, Louisiana, 
and the Gulf Coast really in between those two places and a little part of North Carolina we're looking at very high chances. Uh, looking at the basin as a whole uh, for tropical storm conditions uh, you'll see there the uh, Greater Antilles in particular the very high chance of tropical storm conditions um, a little bit less further south it's going to really um, favour the northern area of the Greater Antilles and indeed the northern part of the Caribbean it doesn't look like we're going to get significant southern tracking Caribbean storms although we can't rule out maybe one in the far south that might affect Nicaragua um, I don't think there's much else to say on that, although maybe it's worth saying actually that the Eastern Atlantic maybe chances a little bit down there uh, compared to recent years. Places like the Azores, Cape Verde, and maybe Bermuda. Um, and looking at hurricane risks, I think it's uh, quite average actually for this year. Maybe it's just the coast of Mexico that's maybe slightly below average, and actually uh, the Eastern um, uh, towards the Leeward Islands. Although hurricanes might form in that area, they might not be particularly strong at that point, um, and so we're not fully sure about hurricane chances in that area compared to average. If you have any more questions uh, in general around Force 13 and what we do, um, and possibly to join in on our contributor drive, please feel free to send us a message, uh, contact at force13.com, or you can also send us messages on social media at Force 13 on Twitter and you can search Force 13 on Facebook and join our Discord server with our big community of over 3,800 uh, storm trackers right now all around the world covering all weather topics. You can find it at discord.gg slash force13.